head to the headquarters of the two uh, camps. Laura Jays with the Yes campaign, Paul Murray with the No function. Uh, Paul and Laura, thank you. Laura, tell us, what can we expect this evening from the Yes campaign perspective? They're clearly sort of... They have to be downplaying expectations right now. Well, I can tell you, Karen, there is a quiet sense of hope. They're certainly not resigned to defeat at this point. Perhaps that they, you know, they can't give up that hope at this point. But this is what I can tell you about what the internal strategists are telling me today. They had 70,000 volunteers across the country. And you know, as well as I, that the ground game matters. 70,000 volunteers for the yes, that would have outnumbered the no by about three to one. So they're hoping they can make up ground there. What I can tell you about the internal track poll as well is I've got some interesting data points that you can mull over here. Uh, even this week, the internal polling was mirroring those published polls saying that 20% of people, according to the internal track, were still yet to make up their mind. They hadn't engaged in the debate just yet or they were still quite torn between the arguments being thrown at them. What is consistent with news poll is that the track polling shows that the Yes campaign had been making up ground all week. News poll, as you know, Kieran, had that at 37, but what I can tell you is the internal track polling had that at least four to five points above that, so in the low 40s. So that's where we get to. The yes strategists don't think this is entirely out of reach. That might sound strange, eight points behind in a general election, but this isn't a general election. This is very different. And they keep on reminding me of that. So that ground being made up uh, all week from the mid-30s to the early 40s and perhaps uh, that ground game and the army of volunteers, 70,000 of them, can make all the difference tonight and get them just over the line. So, um, if I could just take you through a few of the key seats. Feedback from the volunteers in the inner city areas was pretty strong. They were optimistic. This is, of course, very anecdotal, but they're hoping in the inner city areas of the major cities that that will be or need to be up at around 60%. Seats like Wentworth, Warringah, North Sydney, um, Sydney, Reid, those teal seats in New South Wales, Melbourne, the same, Kuyong, the seat of Melbourne, Goldstein, Higgins and Brisbane, the green seats. So that's what they've been focusing on. They need to be above 60 the regional areas are looking pretty tough. In New South Wales, in Victoria, there are pockets that are still pretty OK, uh, like Orange, Albury, Wodonga. Regional Victoria is looking pretty positive. South Australia, the regions there, not at all strong for the Yes campaign, but they're not worried too much about that because of um, a low population. Adelaide and around Adelaide is looking pretty good. So that's all the information I have as the, uh, the polls close. There are still concerns for when you look at the majority of the population, but you need the majority of states as well. There's still concerns about where that third state might come from, say New South Wales and Victoria get over the line, and Tasmania has just been too hard to poll. So we need to look at those early results, and that's where I'll be looking as the results start to come in. Laura, thank you. Paul Murray, we will hear from the No campaigns. Jacinda Price and Warren Mundine a little later, but if the polls are right and Australia does vote no, we're not expecting scenes of celebration where you are? Look, it is one of the strangest settings for a national vote that you can imagine where it's just us. Right now, there'll be nobody looking at a screen. Nobody will be uh, anxiously being the cutaway. Uh, there'll be no opportunities to randomly grab ministers or party elders. Instead, this is a place where um, we will hear throughout the night from Warren Mundine. He'll uh, join us in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, but essentially, the expectation is that no official comment will come until there is an absolute clarity of uh, results. For his part, Peter Dutton will also be making comments, but he will not be making them from here, which in fact is the no campaign. Instead, there'll be an alternative place here in Brisbane. But. Um, while I don't doubt Laura's sources and I don't doubt everything that Laura just said about the information that she's getting, um, well, news poll was pretty clear today. If it's 37 per cent uh, for The Voice, let's compare that to where we were the best part of uh, 25 years ago when we had the Republic referendum. That was 45 per cent. If it is 37 per cent, that'll put it in the bottom five or six referendums of all time, and there have been 10 which have received no states. Now, as late as this week, there was polling that suggested Tasmania could be the one seat. I think if you're, uh, 
if you're playing the 50-50 game, then you've got to think that New South Wales and Victoria might be the places to surprise. But it's been very clear for a long time which way Queensland was going to go and which way Western Australia was going to go. And interestingly, the exclusive reporting that uh, put the cat amongst the pigeons from Andrew Clonell this week, which was the seat-by-seat -seat stuff, I actually went and had a look at the 12 seats that were lost at the last election. How were they going to vote at this referendum? Well, the South East Queensland seats that went to the Greens, well, they look like they're going to go deeper towards yes, meaning no change from where uh, they were philosophically the best part of, what, 18 months ago. New South Wales is an interesting picture where places like Benelong, and remember, Benelong voted no to same-sex marriage uh, in a plebiscite. It then, of course, uh, uh, changed to a Labor MP, and according to that seat-by-seat information, it is going to go yes. Interestingly, read as well. Now, in the same way that many people say that uh, the Labor Party say can't form a federal government if they don't go to places like Lindsay and Western Sydney, well, the Libs are going to go nowhere near government if they can't win places like Reid. And again, that seat-by-seat -seat polling suggests that Reid is also going to be voting yes. That said, there are half a dozen seats in um, Western Australia where that number is in the high 50s, low 60s. Now, also worth pointing out here, too, is that I think part of what you're seeing here, the division between, say, um, the no campaigners and Peter Dutton wanting to be in a different location, is that we've also seen in all of that polling, and even the news poll which has come out, that has not seen a dramatic shift in the primary vote of the party that is pushing this. And remember, of course, it was uh, Bob Hawke who served up many a referenda that failed, but he remained in office. So that'll be worth considering as we go throughout the night. But if news poll is right, this thing doesn't just go down, it goes down in a historic fashion.